After a long sleep, Mother Nature is waking up. New leaves are unfurling while flowers are bursting open. On my morning walks I am greeted by many different beauties. So this week didn't quite go to plan, Wonder Weavers. At the end of last week I had decided I was going to work on the walls and uh, stairs and I was also going to put my mind to how I wanted to decorate the walls. So some time ago I put in an order for some basic materials, things like craft sticks and glue. But of course it didn't arrive. My package is still... Uh, making its way to me so I thought well I have time so what can I do uh, and then a thought popped into my mind make mini books so I've had a lot of fun this week looking online at old books that have been digitalized I have to say I have fallen in love with Frank Morell's illustrations for Little Women. He did more than 200. And what is so wonderful is that uh, through the Project Guttenberg, I hope I said that right, um, it is available to us to enjoy no matter where we are in the world. So in addition to making um, macro mini versions of classic books, I also felt inspired to make a mini herbarium. Now, I love to collect uh, flowers from my garden and I often dry and press them. And uh, I came up with a way to make one. You might have another process which I'd love to know about. So I share vignettes of that process in this video. But I was inspired to make a mini herbarium um, by Emily Dickinson. I've been recently exploring her poetry and like me, she was a nature lover. Um, so Emily's herbarium uh, is actually available online and there's a digital copy that's been made available. And uh, from what I understand, uh, the herbarium was completed by the time she was 14. Um, it's really beautiful to look through actually. But I took some of the measurements and, and other features of her, her journal or her barium and, uh, and that helped me create my own. So my book binding adventure begins with a search on Google. I'm curious. What were the best-selling books in the 19th century? Following various sources, Google quickly compiles more than 40 titles of the most popular books of the 19th century. Which titles are your favourites, Wonderweavers? I'd love you to share in the description box below. I make a list of my favourite titles and then go to Project Guttenberg and spend a long time leisurely reading. So I know that macro mini books started around half an inch in size. So in Illustrator, I make a page template using its ruler as a guide. You can also make the pages in Word I've decided that I would like to include some images 
So then I go to Wikicommons Images and look up the titles. Much to my delight, I find some illustrations from classic books, and these are public domain images. I've also decided to make a mini atlas, so I look up old maps as well. After downloading the images I would like to use, I drag and drop them into my template and then print it out. Because of the thickness of the cartridge paper, I know that each book will consist of only around 20 pages. I then cut the pages with my hobby knife. I bundle the pages together. Hopefully, they're the right way up. Although I'm pretty sure I mixed up the pages of the tale of two cities. Some of the old maps run across two pages. After cutting them out, I fold them. When cutting all of the pages, I leave a small margin on the left hand side. I make sure that when I fold the maps, I leave the margin. I then apply glue to the left margins of the page bundles and leave them to dry. For my mini herbarium, I've decided to use my own collection of pressed and dried leaves and flowers. I scan them as JPEGs at at least 300 dpi. Just like the classic books, I create a page template for the herbarium. Emily Dickinson's herbarium is around 37 centimeters in size. I use that measurement as a guide. I divide it by 12 and then create pages. Meanwhile, in my imagination, the owner of the herbarium is intrigued by the secret meanings of plants. So I have included some of their common meanings and I'm also imagining that the journal belongs to someone who likes to collect quotes and I've added a few that I love from classic books. Over the course of the week, I play with different ways to make covers, including cutting out collage papers and stamping them. And where there were original covers available on public domain, I download them, reduce them to size, and then print them out. Then with matte gel acrylic medium, I then glue the images to leftover strips of watercolour paper. Mm -hmm. 
I then paint them with watered down acrylic paint. For the Hiberium in the Atlas, I've decided to make cloth covers. Following the size of the books, I cut up a tea packet. I paint the plain side of the packet with glue and cover it with muslin. I make sure that the piece of cloth is larger than the cardboard. I then paint the cloth with acrylic paint. Once dry, I trim the corners of the cloth and then glue the edges down. I then line the interior of the cover with white collage paper cut to size. After I finish making the covers, I take each page bundle and lightly cut along its left margin and then glue the bundle to its cover. There you go, Wonder Weavers. I have a little collection of books ready to be placed in the library. I think the residents of the dollhouse will enjoy reading these books. Of course, along with the Atlas and the Hibarium, there is a mini magnifying glass. So I hope that you enjoyed this little mini book binding session. I had a lot of fun and I still have more books to make uh, to fill the shelves of the library. Uh, fingers crossed my supplies arrive soon and uh, I can start doing the floors or laying the floors. So a big heartfelt thank you again for your support. I love hearing from you. So in the description box below, say hello, let me know what you're working on, uh, share with me what book you're reading uh, and or a book that you can recommend to us. Love to hear from you. Uh, take care, stay well, and don't forget to play. Ciao.